Hello, everyone. Good afternoon. Um, I think as you all have heard, we, uh, we've uh, decided to uh, part ways with Ron Rivera. We, we appreciate uh, Ron's efforts and everything he did for the franchise. I mean, obviously, he came here during a tumultuous time period, the ownership change, and he really uh, added leadership. But clearly, um, <clears throat> you know, we weren't good enough this year. We didn't get it done on the field, and uh, so we've decided to go into a new direction. And I think, as you've probably heard, uh, I'm going to be leading that search, both for a head of football operations as well as a head coach. And uh, I'm going to be assisted by uh, my partners, Irvin uh, Magic Johnson, Mitch Rails, and David Blitzer, as well as uh, a couple very well-known uh, sports executives, Bob Myers, who I've known for many years and have a tremendous amount of respect for, and uh, Rick Spielman, who obviously is a 30-year uh, <clears throat> football executive, executive of the year, uh, obviously 10 years with the Vikings. Uh, you know, obviously Bob, Meyer, Bob Myers built one of the amazing uh, sports teams of the last decade in the Golden State Warriors. Uh, they were tough to compete with, so I got to know him. And, uh, <clears throat> you know, even though uh, this season uh, was uh, hard for me and hard for us, it was hard, it's hard to win four games. Uh, from my point of view, we are coming out of this with um, poised for a great future. Uh, a lot of uh, draft capital, a lot of cap space, uh, and uh, I'm lucky enough to be supported by an amazing ownership group, and obviously we think we're an attractive destination for, for, for the next generation of leadership. And so what, what I'm, this is probably amongst the m most important jobs I have as a managing partner, and uh, it's important that I do this personally and get this right and that we bring in the right leadership. So with that, I will open it up to whatever questions you might have. Thank you. Josh, John Kime, okay, John Kime, ESPN. I'm curious with, with Bob and Rick, we know the resumes. What is it about them personally that made you want them to get involved, and what will their roles be beyond this search? Yeah, so um, obviously I'll start with Bob. Um, you know, who, Bob, Bob Myers is a winner. Like, who wouldn't want him uh, on your uh, team trying to help your franchise? He knows how to identify talent. He knows how to build winning franchises, winning cultures. I mean, he's obviously not a football person. He's not been around football, but he's an amazing sports executive, and I'm um, you know, really happy to have him helping. Uh, he'll be around uh, as an advisor to me. Uh, he's not going to be involved with the X and, X's and O's, uh, but he'll be involved through the search process and beyond you know, as it relates to uh, the Washington Commanders helping us uh, build uh, – a, uh, an amazing franchise, an amazing culture, and a winning culture. Uh, obviously, Rick Spielman brings a wealth of football knowledge, uh, the ins and outs of football. Uh, he did, he was executive of the year with the Vikings, you know, with many other teams, and kind of brings that knowledge of football that you need, you know, when you're interviewing uh, candidates. Uh, and so he's going to be helping us through the search process, and we'll see after that. I don't, uh, I'm not sure. Hi, Josh. Uh, Nikki Jabala with Washington Post. Um, how do you envision the general structure for the front office? You mentioned, obviously, the, the head of football operations, but what is your vision for the structure, and then what are you looking for in candidates to fill that role? Yeah, so we're looking for the uh, best uh, people to build an elite franchise that's going to uh, consistently compete and win championships, so that's kind of our goal. In terms of the structure, uh, obviously, I start with talent. You want the best talent. Uh, and sometimes, you know, you let the talent just, you know, just sort of influence the structure. But my orientation, obviously, is that um, <clears throat> being uh, a, the head of football operations, being, in essence, the, in that lead role, that's an 80-hour-a-week job. Uh, being a head coach, that's an 80-hour-a-week job. Um, I think there are two roles there. Um, and so I think it's harder. I mean, it, there are certainly individuals that control everything. Uh, I think it's increasingly hard, so my orientation is not to do that. But on the other hand, uh, I'm going to let, you know, I'm going to really be somewhat flexible around talent. 
So that's kind of how I'm gonna how I'm gonna think about it, and I hope that answers your question a bit. Hey, Josh, David Aldridge with the yeah. Athletic. Um, what about Bob's <clears throat> skill set made you think he could? transition across sports to be helpful to you as you start this process <clears throat> yeah I think that he started off um, you know with a uh, golden he started off as a UCLA, UCLA basketball player winning a national championship so he started with that he's been a winner everywhere where he's gone uh, but then he was a, a sports agent so he knows um, everyone in sports he knows a lot of agents you know many agents as you know cross sports not all but some a lot of the uh, agents, he's run, you know, multiple processes to select talent. He knows how to engage with talent. Um, and so, and then obviously, the Golden State Warriors' success speaks for itself. Um, you know, they started off as a franchise that was not, that was struggling a bit, and they've emerged as, you know, four-time NBA champions. And he's been able to keep a collection of uh, stars there together for a long period of time. So, look, I, like I said at the beginning, I mean, I think uh, he's gonna, he's going to be super helpful. Hey, Josh, J.P. Finley with NBC4 and 106.7 The Fan. A lot of reporting today about <clears throat> requests for interviews all over the league, coach and GM positions. Ideally, what's your timeline for all this? And what's the timeline for the folks that are <clears throat> still here when they kind of find out their future? Yeah, so I'm going to run a um, thorough but rapid process. I mean, obviously, uh, in, we need the next leadership here because we got a lot of work to do. You know, we have the draft, we have the off season, we have uh, we have you know a lot of draft capital that we need to be get prepared for. Uh, ultimately, free agency uh, combines, but on the other hand, you know, this is a really important decision, and so it's going to be a. Uh, rapid but thorough process. I mean, ideally, uh, you would have the head of the front office in place uh, before you ultimately select a coach, because obviously that's important. Uh, but, you know, look, again, like we're not in full control of the time frame because what we're ultimately trying to do is, is you know, end up with the best people, and, you know, the best people generally have alternatives. So um, that's what I would say. In terms of, I spoke with, um, <clears throat> the front office leadership and and the and the coaching staff, some of the coaches today, and you know I appreciate that from their view, from their point of view, there's uncertainty. Uh, but I've just asked them I've, to be a, a part, to bear with us, and to just uh, to do their jobs, right? Uh, to continue to run the football team, uh, and you know everyone to a person has said that they care about the club, they care about the franchise. Um, and that they uh, want to be part of the solution. And so, uh, obviously, without uh, the um, head coach and without the head of the front office in place, you know, there's, some, there's some uncertainty for them, and I respect that and am sympathetic to it. But on the other hand, they're professionals, and, and so, uh, you know, we're working through it. Hey, Josh, Ben Standig with The Athletic. Um, <clears throat> you famously with the Sixers, were willing to take a slower rebuild to get things where you wanted them to be uh, with coming off a 4-13 and season. How uh, open are you to taking, being patient with a rebuild, or do you see this being more of a quicker turnaround? Yeah, listen, um, this was not a fun season for the ownership group. I mean, we're, we're right there with the fans in terms of uh, sweating every loss. Uh, and so, I mean, obviously, if we could write the script, it would be a quick turnaround. But on the other hand, um, you have to make long-term decisions uh, and do things in a very, you know, one person at a time, one athlete at a time. And so sometimes they take longer, right? So I think what my, my view is that we want it to be as quick as we can, but the ultimate goal, right, is to be an elite team that's competing for championships. And so... Um, when you do, I find that when you do things quickly, uh, you, you know, sometimes, you know, you set yourself back. And so the, my orientation is to do, make the right decisions and uh, let the time frame, you know, take its own course. Uh, I mean, obviously, I, I want a winning franchise quickly. But on the other hand, I, you know, for me, it's about making the right decisions. Michael Phillips, Washington Times, and 910 The Fan. Uh, you've spent a year now with the commanders, the branding, the name. Have you had discussions about where to go from there, and, and what have those been like in terms of the name and the branding? Yeah, as you can see, we're a little busy. Uh, <clears throat> um, you know, in addition to uh, basically uh, picking uh, 
a new head of the front office, a new coach. Uh, and I see uh, Mark in the front uh, there. Uh, we're busy at work, um, working on uh, the, the next improvements to our stadium uh, in terms of uh, fan experience, in terms of premium areas, and fixing a lot of different things, and investing in the stadium. We're going to be rolling out a big investment program uh, in the next few weeks, and that, there's an enormous amount of detail. Uh, that the business staff and you know some of the ownership group are working on, and then we've got obviously uh, our new home and thinking about that. And so, um, the, right now our focus today is on sports first and foremost, and then these other things. And so, uh, you know, th those are our focuses right now. Josh Barry Sverluger from the Washington Post. To, back to logistics a little bit. Is it your desire to have a head of football operations in place? and that person hires the head coach, or will you do that in concert with that person? How, how will that work out? Yeah, so m my desire is to have the head of the football operations in place and then to work, to, to listen very hard to what that person wants to do in terms of the coaching staff. In other words, I think those two things have to work together. And obviously, as I've said before, um, I want to um, um, you know, get the best talent here and then hold them accountable and um, and work with them, right? So what that person wants to do or not do is really important in our decision process. It doesn't mean that you um, are not involved in it, but it means that you're, you know, to a large extent, you're relying on that person to bring a series of candidates to the table. And so that would be my ideal scenario. On the other hand, <clears throat> you know, there are, uh, we have to move quickly here, so uh, it's not perfect, but that's that's my orientation. Hey, Josh, Sam Fortier with the Washington Post. How many candidates do you expect to interview for each position, and are the stakes higher because of how this year went? Yeah, I don't think we want to get into specifics around the process, but um, we've been thinking about who the best candidates are, and so, and like I said, I think it's an attractive destination, and truthfully, also, you don't really know who's going to be available. Um, there's still a lot of teams playing. Uh, I'm, I'm, you know, we, we wish we were one of them, uh, but there are a lot of teams playing, and you don't know how all this is going to sort out. And so um, I think that um, we'll have to see uh, where it ends up in terms of numbers, but we're going to run a very thorough process. And anyone who is uh, capable, who we think meets the criterion uh, of being able to lead this franchise and win, which is, is our ultimate goal, then we're going to talk to them. Josh Steve Wonder from the Associated Press. What did you make of Eric Bieniemy's season as offensive coordinator, and, and will you be considering him for the head coaching vacancy? Yeah, so I've enjoyed working with Eric, and obviously um, he's had success over the years. And um, I'd say that um, you know I spoke to Eric today, and um, you know he's hard at work managing our franchise, and and I look forward to um, hearing to hopefully if I could write the script. Um, having a, our senior football operations executive in place and then approaching the coaching search, search with Eric and others. Hey, Josh, how are you? Hey, how are Candace you? Buckner, Washington Post. And um, any of your other franchises in hockey and, and basketball, have you gone to another sport for advice, uh, like getting a baseball guy to help with the Sixers or maybe an NFL <coughs> guy to help with the NHL, just with your advisory? Um, you know, look, I think that, I mean, the answer to that is no. Uh, but uh, I think that, obviously, uh, high-quality people are available across many pursuits. Uh, and so um, I think that uh, we're always looking for people that can help us. Uh, and so, but right now, the, uh, we're, we're happy with the, uh, the leadership staff we have at the Devils and the leadership staff we have at the Sixers. And they happen to come out of ba uh, hockey and, and basketball, so we, we don't have any uh, baseball or football people in the mix there. <clears throat> Josh, Scott Abraham, ABC7. Obviously, you mentioned everyone's frustrated. You're frustrated. Fans are frustrated. What's the message you want to give to this fan base to <clears throat> have them believe still that this ship is heading in the right direction? Yeah, so my, my message to the Washington fan base is thank you. You guys showed up in droves. Uh, you believed in us. Uh, we sold out every game, uh, even with a four-win season. Now, granted, there are a few visiting fans there, 
but that's on us. Uh, we're not in the playoffs, uh, and um, and so thank you for showing up. And the future is bright. Uh, we have a lot of cap space. We have uh, a great ownership group. We're very committed to winning for this city, and uh, look forward to showing you. In addition to telling you over the next series of uh, years. Josh Chick Hernandez, WSA Nine. Um, how you know you've been through this before with with coaches? How difficult was the conversation with Ron Rivera, and was the thought of doing this earlier in the year? Yeah, Ron's a consummate professional, right? Ron's been in the NFL for a long period of time, and I think he appreciated that uh, we weren't that the team didn't perform this year, and so I think that it was not a surprise and. I think Ron is a good person, a good man. We have a good relate. We continue to have a good relationship. Um, I think he felt um, that he was, and and I went out of my way to give him uh, the season to perform. And I think there was a uh, much appreciation on all sides. And and he's moving forward. And I'm sure whatever he does with his life, uh, it'll be good and successful. Um, obviously, I think about. Um, coaches all the time and I, I don't find that um, changing uh, coaches in the not it, I, it's not that I've never done it but I think that uh, moving uh, changing coaches in the middle of the season uh, isn't tremendously productive uh, and I didn't think it was gonna be productive here and I had also committed um, to the city and to Ron when we showed up we showed up on the eve of training camp uh, and I committed to the city and to Ron that um, that we would give this the season. That's what we did. Uh, Mitch Tischler, Monumental Sports. Um, <clears throat> after being around the NFL for, for the season, how much have you learned about kind of the way NFL operations run? <clears throat> and how does kind of the rebuild that needs to happen here compare to um, the state of the franchise, I guess, compare here to some of your other uh, professional sports franchises? Yeah, look, I'm just getting to know the NFL. I mean, obviously, it's been a, a a good year of a lot of learning, a long year. Obviously, not no no success on the field, but um, I would say that um, I think there's a lot of ingredients here for success. Uh, I think we have a lot of great players in the locker room. Uh, we have a lot of committed people. Uh, we have a lot of flexibility around the draft and around our ability to spend uh, for free agents. And so and a lot of flexibility on our roster. And I think we, and I think we will recruit uh, amazing individuals on the coaching side and on the front office side. So I'm, opt I'm pretty optimistic that uh, we're gonna be able to move the ball here very quickly. Hey Josh, George Wallace, WTOP Radio. Mm -hmm. A lot of players today were talking about how encouraging and refreshing it was how, when you addressed them this morning. How important is that <clears> for you to have that kind of open dialogue with the team, with the players? I think it's very important. Look, at the end of the day, the players are uh, the ones that win games. Owners don't win games, coaches don't win games, players win games, and they see things that you don't always see. They experience the world in a different way. Uh, you know, we're not out there, they are. And so I think it's very important to be having a dialogue with, your, with the players, uh, listening to some of the leadership, listening to how they feel about things. Obviously, ultimately, uh, the decision uh, rests with me and the ownership group as to who the leadership is. So you don't, you don't give away that decision-making authority. But um, I think it's very important to be engaged with your players, particularly the captains and the leadership. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. To be continued.